We cannot wait to open the front door and there has been a huge amount of effort from the team here to get it ready and it's not until you're sharing it with people and seeing how people respond to it that you really know whether or not you've got it right. So it's going to be a big day for us. It's, it's been one hell of a year for Heritage throughout the city but how has Covid impacted on Bath Preservation Trust? It's been really, really tough. We lost 90% of our income overnight um, and we had to make some really, really big decisions and difficult decisions and we were really, really sad to lose some people. Um, we also had to change the roles of our volunteers so we don't have room guides in the house anymore. Uh, we've had to create new projects and things for them to do. Um, but also just not doing what we love. We love being in our museums, sharing what we know, sharing our collections and our stories um, and doing that with the real thing in front of you is irreplaceable. And whilst we've been able to do creative things online um, and focus on the new experience and what that might be, it's, it's not the same. Explain to me what this new immersive experience is, because putting it bluntly, you've replaced your volunteers in the rooms with electronic devices. Yeah, we recognised uh, that we could only have a certain number of people in the house um, and we needed to make sure that opening the doors was viable. Um, so we were really sad to let go of our room guides. Um, and we also recognised that the rich level of interpretation they bring needed replacing. Um, so what we have done is created a technological experience, an immersive experience. The house comes to life around you with soundscapes and filmscapes uh, and you see the house lived in. So you meet a family, you're eavesdropping in on their conversations as they move around the house throughout the day and you're also meeting the servants and seeing how the house was run. So whilst we really miss that interaction, and I'm sure visitors will miss it too, we also recognise that what we've been able to do is really show people what this house might have been like if it was lived in, how it was run, how it was used, um, in a way that actually we've not been able to do before. Well, we're all being used as guinea pigs yes. this morning. <laughs> and I must say it's an experience that, that brings the house to life. Um, the only thing I'm concerned about, I, I know you're still working on the finer points of where arrows go and how you move people around, but um, uh, you are making it clear to people when they, they book that it is an immersive experience that you are supposed to stay in each room <laughs> and, until the end of that particular uh, what should we call it, piece of the experience. Yeah, and I think that's as much about social distancing at the moment as anything else. Um, asking people, and it's part of our introduction as well, when people come in, we make it very clear um, when you're welcomed into the house how to move around and how to enjoy it. Um, and it's that combination of actually staying safe, not moving on until the next people have moved through as well, and, and the timing has been managed to ensure that. There will hopefully come a time when people can move around at their leisure, and if they don't want to watch it all or listen to it all they can move on um, but at the moment it's, it's as much about safety as it is about enjoying the narrative and, and hearing the whole story as it unfolds through the house. I, I was going to ask you who actually researched and wrote it because uh, I, you know 10 out of 10 <laughs> for that uh, what I like about it is you know there is an obvious reference now to Bath's connections with the the plantations and with slavery which is good so you get a tick for that and also very subtly you introduce other parts of the city uh, so people who might come to number one in a way are being sort of led off afterwards to other heritage attractions. Yeah there are certainly a lot of people to acknowledge. Um, Dr Amy Frost who is our senior curator has definitely been the person to ensure that there is an authentic integrity to the content and it's her knowledge of the city and of the house and the collections that has ensured that we've been able to provide that. We've obviously been working with others as well. Iona Keane is an interpretive consultant who's been reviewing our narrative and supporting us with the process and PLB Projects are the company that we brought in, the external consultants, to help us create this new experience. In, in one of the rooms I, I thought to myself, this is like listening to the, to the whole week of the Archers on a <laughs> Sunday morning, but you, you do quite easily. Uh, find yourself going into the narrative because yeah, uh, a, a story is being told. It feels like a radio play in some ways um, and as you move around the house and, and I, th I hope it is one that people will be able to flexibly dip in and out of and we've also allowed time in each room for people to still take in the interiors, enjoy the collections and also look out of the window. We have incredible views across the Crescent that you're not going to see anywhere else so we're trying to allow, try and allow time for that as well as actually experiencing the narrative and the character 
characters and, and also getting a real sense of you've had a really good quality visit and you've really spent time in the house um, and you take something away from it that you just wouldn't have taken away before. Do you know, there, there's a lot of talk about the only way the, the high street can be reinvigorated is making shopping an, an experience. Uh, in a way, number one is doing that with history. Yes, and we've been very, very lucky through the pandemic to secure funding to enable us to do this. So we had emergency funding from the National Heritage Lottery Fund, which enabled us to do the consultative work on our potential um, in a COVID environment. And then we had cultural recovery funding that enabled us to actually install this. So we, we do recognise that without that funding, this would not have happened. And we're not even sure if our doors would have opened. So we do really appreciate that support as well. We're focusing on number one, but of course, Bath Preservation Trust embraces other heritage attractions in the city. Uh, can we briefly ask or can we briefly talk about what's happening with them? Things yeah. like uh, the Museum of Astronomy, the Herschel Museum and, and of course Beckford's Tower. Yes, yeah, so the Herschel Museum of Astronomy is open already um, and we have a pre-booked time ticket system over there um, and there are slots through the day that people can book or it's always worth knocking on the door and seeing if they've got any slots um, available. For the Museum of Bath Architecture and for Beckford's Tower we are doing exclusive visits so pre-booked guided tours or self-led visits. Um, sadly this is where our staffing has been a challenge so it needs to be pre-booked and to cover the cost of a member of staff being over there to open up and oversee the visit um, but it's it's still available it's still accessible to the public is it too early to ask you uh, the results of the consultation about Beckford's Tower uh, when, when are, are we going to hear what you're going to do well, we are still in the development phase of our lottery funded project um, and it's over a £3 million project, um, partly to conserve the building but also to develop the narrative and obviously the life of William Beckford um, who was also a plantation owner um, and where the wealth came from to actually build the tower is going to be a really important part of the work that we do there. Um, but we are in development phase until next summer um, and one thing the pandemic has made it quite difficult for us to do is consult in the space with the community groups that we're looking to engage with. So um, we are going to be accelerating that work over the summer um, and the outcomes of that will feed into a new interpretation strategy for the tower which we will start developing in the autumn. And if anybody wants to be involved in that um, and engage with us and feed in what they feel we could and should be doing up there, I hope they'll get in touch. And one final question, um, no news yet on the new CEO who is going not to replace yet. Caroline? No, well, I'm not sure anyone can replace Caroline, <laughs> um, but we have a long list um, and trustees are working um, with a recruitment firm um, to get that down to a short list and we are hoping to welcome somebody into the post in the autumn. And I would like to leave you with a teaser if I can, which is that this is one of three immersive experiences that we're going to be launching this year for number one Royal Crescent. So we will have a special Jane Austen in Bath experience and we will also have a Georgian Christmas.